got Julio Arce, born in Miami, raised in New York City, former Golden Gloves champion, currently one of the top contenders in the UFC featherweight division, coming off of a nice win last week in UFC 273, which is an amazing card. What was your upbringing like? Um, so, you know, my family, so they're, they're all from Colombia. They brought me here. You know, I was born in Miami, went to live in Colombia. They wanted me to be a U.S. citizen. Then I went back to uh, Colombia, lived for a bit. Then my mom moved to New York. And then from here, then, you know, a couple, I lived a couple of years in Colombia, like most of my childhood. And then by the time I, like, I was already growing up, they sent me here to New York. And then from here, I've been in New York ever since. I read something on Wikipedia about how you were a little overweight as a kid. And so yeah. what, your sister, who was the, the driving force to, to get you signed up? And of all places, at Tiger Showman, right? I used to be a very, very overweight kid. I used to be that kid that would be very shy to, you know, I'll go to a pool and I'll keep my, I'll go swimming with my shirt on because I would be that, you know, insecure about, you know, the way I looked. And my sister was like, you know, we we're trying to find an activity. You know, I tried team sports. But it just like wasn't my thing. It just I I wanted something that I can hold myself accountable for. That I'm gonna be like it's like yeah, if I want to get good, like it's it's my responsibility. So you know my sister's like you know you want to try like martial arts. So they looked around and we found Tiger Shulman's. It just stuck out and came in, took my first class, and 21 years later here I am. <laughs> now did you ever find yourself in a situation growing up in Bayside or just anywhere in the city where you had to defend yourself? Yeah, but, you know, it's like it, it gets to a point where it's like when you know what you can do, like you don't have to get to that point. And I think people, some people see that and they're like, you know what? Uh, I'm going to walk the other way. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Or, you know, like you, you, when you're known in the neighborhood, you know, people walk by all the time past our school and they see me there. And then you go to a restaurant and – someone starts acting up or try to, you know, be like that person and people know you, they're going to be like, <laughs> they, they step in for like, yo man, it's like, I'm doing you a favor. It's like, <laughs> don't bother that guy. It's the last thing you want to do. What specific role does your mom, your sisters, how, how important is their emotional support? I, I read somewhere that your sisters have been like in attendance at almost every one of your matches. Absolutely. They've been to every single one of my fights. The only ones they couldn't make were the ones that were like uh, at the Apex Center because that's when like they weren't allowing anybody in there. But other than that, they've been to every single every single fight. They were they were the ones that were like, "Yeah, you want to fight? Just freaking sign the contract and get yourself started and just just start fighting." I'm like, they were the ones they're the ones that gave me that nudge to just you know to start fighting. It's like, no, you love it. Go do it. Go do it. Well, they say behind every strong or great man is a strong woman. You've got a few of them. <laughs> you've, got yeah. some, you've got a few of them. Yeah, they're, 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 they're driving force, and they're, they've been to every single fight, and they're just amazing. We can love them to death. Now, you were on Dana White Contender Series back in the day. You won by some technical knockout situation, didn't get the contract. What was that like emotionally? Because a lot of people would just say, you know what, I'm, I'm hanging it up. I'm going to do something else. This is not for me. How'd you? How'd you deal with that? How'd you translate that mentally? Yeah, so it was, uh, it was like a, it's like a quick heartbreak. And then I moved on it was that, that type of thing. It was like, you know, I didn't get the contract and it was like, but at the same time, I'm like, I left my stamp there because I saw, you know, I kind of showed that. Yeah. You know, first round didn't go as well, but then I just came out or came out and blitz them with like a freaking 50 piece combo. And I, you know, I put them away. The ref had to stop it. And I didn't get the contract, but I left, I left like my stamp there. And, you know, what I teach every day is, look, things might not go your way. Don't, don't give up. Like part of me, part of me was like, hurt inside. I'm like, damn, you know, it's like this, this was my opportunity and I missed it. But then I was like, you know what, dude, just, just stay on, stay on course. So I took a fight. I did a kickboxing fight, a glory kickboxing fight in the, in the city. And then I just, finished the guy off. I TKO'd him. And then um, I just kept training. I just kept training. No one like, you know, like, look, my, I guess I, I looked at it this was like my journey to the UFC was different than everybody else's. Some people, they get called and it's like, yo, we got to fight for you and blah, blah. Some people miss their opportunities and their road is different, but eventually I was going to get there. So I just kept my head up and then, you know, the opportunity came by where I took a, I took a fight uh, UFC 220 against Dan Ige, and then the rest is history, man.
I just got to keep, just keep your head up and keep going. How has coaching made you a better fighter? You know what? Because when you co, you know, like when for my students, I see, I see a lot of, you know, everything that I teach them, I see them doing. And then when I see my students, my students look exactly like how I, how I train, how I fight, how I, you know, you know, train on the mat. So then I step out of the box and I'm like, gives me a chance to kind of get out of that box that I'm in and, and look from the outside and be like, what can we make better? And then when I go around, there's things that I got to, you know, adjust to my students. I apply it to myself too. And, you know, then at the same time, you know, I watch a lot of, you know, like my own fight videos and I'm like, okay, even though this fight went good, what can we make better? Even if I lost this fight, what can we make better? What was wrong there? It's like, how can we improve? And I just look, there's always something to just make better. So I always like take a chance to just like step out of the box. So I'll ask people like, you know, what can I do better? I'll ask my coach, like, what can I do better? So it gives me a chance to really observe and really just kind of pick things here and there to improve every single time. Do you watch film of your upcoming opponents? Do your coaches watch film? Do you believe that's a good practice or a bad practice? There's a lot of different philosophies out there. My coaches watch it, so they have the game plan. And they, they're like, this is what we're going to do. I watch it, so then if I'm training on my own, if I'm going for a run, or like I'm shadow kickboxing, whatever it is, it's like I'm envisioning that person in front and what they're trying to do to me. But then I'm like, you do my game plan just constantly replaying it replaying it over and over and over and over and over so then by the time it's fight time it's like yo i've been in this scenario multiple times now that last fight against santos you know young fighter up and coming uh, a lot of talent it looked like the game plan was perfect you know he's a forward press fighter you caught him off balance constantly your footwork was amazing your striking was impeccable so obviously you watch film you prepare for that the game plan was perfect yeah Absolutely. You know, look, hungry young fighter. We, we took a lot, of, a lot of things into consideration. One, you know, it's his first fight in the UFC. We don't know how he's going to deal under the bright lights. He's aggressive. He comes from a very aggressive gym. You know, shoot the boxing. Those guys go ape shit. And when he's a forward guy like that, and it's someone that's won a lot by, like, spinning techniques. So, you know... He's happy throwing. He's trying to make highlight reels out of everybody. So I'm like, this guy's going to be forward, and he's going to be just trying to spin and make a highlight reel out of it. I'm like, so what is the one thing is like that he's going to have a hard time? I mean, he's a Muay Thai guy. So they just go very, very straightforward. So I'm like, hit side to side movement and just stick behind your jab. It's all forward. And just My coach is like, look, we want you to fight smarter. That's it. Fight smart. It's like, don't think about, don't think about winning. Think about scoring. And I'm like, you score more than him, you win the fight. That's it. You came out to Mark Anthony's song, Vivir Mi Vida. Why that song? Uh, what does that mean to you? Well, for me, that song describes me very, very, very well. Look, for me, I know, like, look, a lot of people like, the, you know, that serious song and they come out, it's like, oh, I'm ready to fight. For me, it's like, look, I, I, like, I enjoy this process. You don't really see me like in serious mode a lot. I'm always smiling, always having a good time. I'm enjoying myself. That song describes who I am. It gets me hyped up. It gets me more up than like, you know, serious, like, all right, you got to go. So I was like, yo, I feel loose. I'm enjoying this moment. I'm embracing everything. I like, when I wait, walk down the crowds cheering, I'm like, yeah, I'm freaking feeling it, man. I'm, I'm in my groove. I'm like, yo, this this song best describes me. And I've been walking out to the song for a while now. And it just like, it just describes me as a fighter and as a person. Like, I'm blessed to say I live a great life. I do what I love every single day. You know, so for me, it's like, I, I don't really work a day in my life. Everything that I do, it's, I, I love doing it. And I enjoy every minute of it because I'm living my dream. What would you say to the 20 year old? Julio Arce, what would you say to yourself now that you're older? What advice would you give yourself? What lessons have you learned that you want to tell yourself when you were younger? I think um, focus a lot on, I think for, for someone, for me, if I was younger, it's like focus a lot on your mind, like a lot in your mindset, a lot of the mental aspect of it that, you know, when you're young, you know, when you're young, you're like, oh, I'm, like I'm the fucking man sometimes. But then 
it's when you hit like a certain hardship that you have to you have to dig in deep inside and you have to find something in your mind to be like, yo, things are gonna get hard along the road. It's not always gonna be freaking sunshine, butterflies, and the good times. It's gonna be tough times. It's like, dude, stay strong. Don't lose your focus. Focus a lot on the mental aspect of it because sometimes, look, there's days that you're you feel you feel up and you feel like you're on fire. There's some days when you feel like it's like, I don't know, it's like I'm either be whatever. But it's those days that you gotta, you gotta find out kind of what you're made of. Like you gotta like dig in deep and just like, all right, dude, no matter what, still give it a hundred percent, even if, even if you feel a certain way. Any fighters in your gym right now you want to give a shout out to? Anyone that we should be looking out for? Just anyone you want to pass along your your appreciation to? The floor is all yours, buddy. One, my entire team of Tiger Showmen. I, I do want to give a, you know, give it to these fighters because they're they're the up and comers. They're they're like the they're the future of, you know, they're like the next the next wave of young fighters coming up. So I mean, I got a whole list. Got my boy uh, Rob Barricchio. He's actually two and zero as a pro. Monsher Kara. He's three and zero as a pro. Like they just started pro career. They're taking off. Like you know, got Ricardo Fuentes, who's uh, another. Colombian brother right there. He's coming up. You got to watch out for him. Five and one as a pro. You know, Shane Burgos, his little brother, Ryan Burgos, he's making his pro debut. This kid, uh, Christian McCauley, who's making his pro debut as well. Uh, teammate, Justin Musalia. Then we have Danny Boy Ramirez. I mean, we got a, a whole squad of up-and-comers. So I'm excited to watch these guys, you know, make their pro debuts, all right, continue their pro careers, really make it big because – I get to see, you know, as I'm, I'm already like at that stage, but I get to see the next generation coming up, which is really, it's really amazing to see. Probably keeps you young, right? It keeps you oh, yeah. invigorated. Yeah. One quick question before I let you go. Vincente Luque, Bala Muhammad, who wins and why? Vincente Luque. I feel like there's, there's some about Vincente Luque, Luque people are falling asleep on that guy. <laughs> I think that dude is just vicious. I met him a couple of times. Nice freaking dude. But I think he's going to take it by – he's going to take it by decision. Okay. All five rounds. Huh, main All event. All five rounds. Bilal, okay. look, Bilal's gritty. He's yes. a gritty guy. And that, that dude's got experience, and he put in work. So, you know, I'm not going to count him out. Because anything can happen in these fights. Thank you for your time, brother. I really appreciate it. I wish you the best of luck. You look great in your last fight. You're just peaking right now. Yep. Thank you so much for having me, brother. You're welcome. Take care. Peace. And Excellent. Well, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy. If you're back on the East Coast, that traffic is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, apologies about that. It's like I, because I'm like running, I got like a, a private lesson at 2.30. Like I'm literally right back on track with everything. I understand the traffic in New York is pretty bad. I was born in Brooklyn myself. I know getting in and out of there at the wrong time is a motherfucker. <laughs> it's oh, just yeah. Cross, right, the cross Bronx is a nightmare. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>